It's got mobility, it's got evasion, it's got power, and it's got style in spades. It also happens to have three of the coolest hunting arts in this entire game. While it fell out of grace in Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, I can tell you in Monster Hunter Cross it is back. Welcome to my guide on the longsword. Hey guys, this is Gaijin Hunter. What follows is my weapon tutorial from Monster Hunter Generations. And if you already know everything from it and you just want to jump to what are the changes in Generations Ultimate, about the new art, alchemy style, and valor style, jump to the timestamp in the description down below. If you're new to Generations or you want to have a refresher, please sit back and enjoy the entire video. Okay, like the other weapons, all the other styles derive from the guild style, so we're going to take an in-depth look at that one first. Now while the longsword doesn't have that many attacks, it's really how you put them together and how you position yourself that really makes the weapon. Let's go over the few that you do have. Now X while either all your draw attack will do this a nice forward moving downward slash. If you notice it does move you forward quite a bit so it's good for closing distances and you can follow it up with one more X to do another downward slash. Now the second downward slash doesn't move you at all so you can do this sort of like a combo. If you press A while idle, it'll do this nifty little poke. Now the poke doesn't do a lot of damage, but it is very fast, it hits in a very specific spot, so it's good for trying to trip enemies or for tying them together into combos. From the poke, if you press X, you'll do an upward swing. And this is another combo move, so it's really fast, doesn't do a lot of damage, um, but it is good for tying together moves and for getting in lots of hits. Also, if you do an evade and press the X button, you'll do that upward slice as well. Now after, let's finish off this A button combo, if we do the A, X, and X one more time, we'll do that second downward strike. If you notice, this combo doesn't move you at all, so it is pretty convenient if you know you don't want to move. From there, you can continue on with the poke, because the poke can be done just about after anything, and just keep the combo going. As long as you like. Okay, the move that really ties these together is the Fade Slash. Press X and A at the same time and your character will hop backwards in kind of an evasive attack maneuver, striking the enemy as they move away. Now while this does look like an evasive maneuver, it does not have any invincibility frames and is not affected by any armor skills that grant you invincibility when you're evading. Now, when you do a default, X and A it will do a backwards hop, but if you hold left on the circle pad, which is much easier if you're inside of a combo, you can do a left evade. You do move quite a bit of distance, so it's really great for getting out of the way and hitting the monster at the same time. Similarly, you can do a right side one as well. Now, a little unused, but a little interesting little tip here is that if you press the special icon on your touchpad, it will swing you over and do a right fade slash. Now, if you haven't played Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, then you don't know about the new move, which they've added in the fourth generation, which is really nice which is this charge and attack that you can do after a Fade Slash by pressing R. Just do a Fade Slash and hit R and your character will run in and do a really cool looking swipe. You can do this after any Fade Slash, left and right, and so forth. Now your moves afterwards is pretty limited because the Fade Slash is really for the Spirit combo which we'll be covering in just a moment. But you do have a choice, you can hit the X button to do an Upward Slash here. So hit R, then X and it does an Upward Slash. Now that upper slash does not connect in with any other moves, it is the end of the combo. So all you can do from there is either evade or you can do another fade slash. Fade slashes can be done after anything, so after the first X attack, after a poke, after the upward strike, and you can do them after, again, after anything. So use them as you need to move around the enemy and just keep up your attack. Now you do get a jump attack, let's take a quick look at that. There we go. It's just a standard downward chop. And now for the most important part of this weapon called the spirit gauge. If you look at the upper left hand corner of the screen above my name, you'll see a gauge. This thing will go up as you hit monsters. Let's see here. Now it does deplete rather fast. Watch how fast this thing goes down. As long as you have energy in there, however, you can press the R button to do a spirit attack. There are four spirits attacks and they all to go together as a combo, so you will need almost a full gauge in order to pull off the entire combo. 
That being said, if you can land the very final hit of it, which is a round slash, against a monster, it will level up your gauge. Let's see what that looks like first, and then we'll go over it. Now, if you do max out your gauge when you're attacking, it will start to blink. When that happens, you get 13% more attack power for the next 30 seconds, and you don't have to worry about the gradual depletion, so you can look more for an opening. 13% attack power is really big. Now you can draw into Spirit Attack 1 by hitting R, X, and A. It's a popular way to look for an opening and go for it. 1, 2, 3, and 4. As long as you connect with that fourth one, you notice our gauge leveled up. Zenogre, stop being a punk. Okay, so if it's white, you get 5% more attack. If we level it up one more time, we'll go up to 10%, which is yellow. And then one more time, we go up to red gauge, which is 20% attack power for an entire two minutes. Now, if you hit the round slash again while you're in red, it will restore the entire countdown. And if you miss it, it only goes back to yellow. So as long as you hit it again, you're back up to red. Okay, so now I'm using an art that gives me maximum gauge so I can show you off each move separately. Okay, press R1 to do Spirit Attack 1, press it twice to do Spirit Attack 2, Spirit Attack 3 is a 3 hit combo here, but you only need to press X once, and then press it one more time to do the final round slash. Now if you're almost out, of, if you don't quite have a full gauge and you want to be able to sneak in the lax bit amount of juice that you need to do the combo, there are two opportunities where you can sneak in normal attacks. After 1, press X to do a jab. After 2, press X to do an upper swipe, and then you can go into 3 and 4. You'd be surprised how much that little extra bit of juice helps. Also, you can go right into Spirit Attack 1 by pressing R, X, and A at the same time. It is a very popular way to go straight into the combo. Now, you may be asking yourself, having to have a full gauge is a real pain. That's a lot of work. Well, luckily, they did add a way that you can do it faster. Now if you remember, when we hit the Fade Slash, there's the R button attack you can do that's a charge and attack. It only had a value of 18, however if you do it with Spirit Energy, it gets a value of 30 because it is a Spirit Attack. Let's see it here. Hit R, and it goes right into Spirit 3. So it's a way to bypass both Spirit 1 and Spirit 2 and go straight to a 3 hit combo. Okay, there's only one more attack we're missing to show off, which is the Jumping Spirit Slash. Now, if you're under white gauge, all it does is a single attack, which we'll show off here even though we don't have gauge. And from there, you can go into Spirit 2, 3, and 4. Okay, now we're at white. Let's make sure we have a little bit of energy. Okay. Now, check this out. Just hit R once. You'll do that, and you go right into 3. Okay, let's take a quick look at Striker Style. Now with Striker Style, you still have all your normal moves. You have your Downward X, you have all those, you have the A Poke, you have the Combos, you have your Fade Slash. However, there are two major things that are missing. First one is your left or right Fade Slash, so there's no way you can move out of the way to left or right and do a Fade Slash, just the behind one. And you also lose that Charge and Attack by pressing R after a Fade Slash. Doesn't sound like a lot, but that is your ticket to a fast, Round Slash of uh, Spirit 4, so that's actually a really big deal, and not having left and right really does cut down on your mobility. Still, you get three arts, so when you see them at the end of this video, you might be convinced to try a striker to get them. Okay, now let's talk about Aerial Style, which also seems to be a popular choice for some players here. Now, if we test out, we still have our standard combo. Nothing has been changed here whatsoever. However, we will notice that if we hit R after our Fade Slash, we do not get the cool run-in slash combo. So that is going to make it a lot harder to do spirit combos. But you know what? It's okay, because if you hit R to do a spirit move, you don't do them. You can only initiate spirit one from the air. You cannot initiate it from the ground. Okay, now the jump attacks are nice. You do get 26 motion on those, which is good. And getting to white gauge is the hardest thing to do. Once you do this, you do spirit 1, 2, 3, and then 4. Now the beginning becomes much easier. Now with white, all you have to do when you do an aerial attack is you go straight into spirit 3. Which means one more hit, wham, that is spirit 4 right there. 
It's very similar to Bushido, which we'll get to after this, but only two moves to get to that leveling up mechanic means that you can be doing maximum damage for a long time. And finally, everyone's favorite style for longsword, the Bushido style. This has to be hands down one of the best Bushido styles in the game. Now you, all your normal attacks are still there in attack, the only thing that you're missing here is your backwards fade slash. If you press X and A just by default, or if you put left input, you'll do a left one. Now you can tap the special button on the touch screen, or from a combo you can do the right fade slash, but there's no running away because for Bushido, they want you up and in there. Now if you have a full spear gauge, you can do your one, two, three, four, nope. You do not get a fourth spirit attack, which means you cannot raise your spirit gauge using this combo. Which is great, because this combo now is meant for doing out a lot of damage. For after a Bushido evade, press the X button to do a new attack here, and then press R and you'll do this two hit attack. That last hit attack, even though it's very fast, is what levels up your gauge. Now please note, if you have no spirit gauge at all, you will not be able to do that final attack. All you'll be able to do is the X attack and you'll stop right there. So you do need a little bit of spirit in order to max out your gauge, but you don't need that much. Let's go see against Narga here. Just do an evade, go in and press X and then R and wham. That's all you need to do to level up your gauge. Also, if you notice, it doesn't really have a wide hit radius, which means that you can level up your gauge online without having to worry about tripping everybody around you. It really is fabulous. And the damage output is unbelievable. I mean, it does 28 for the first hit and then 80 for the second one, which is really insane. With strong Bushido attacks, having your spirit gauge there so you can do lots and lots of spirit hits, which are very powerful, the Bushido style is probably the one most people are going to go to. However, don't count out the Guild and Striker just yet because we haven't gone over how cool the arts are. Okay, first art is the Crescent Slash. What this is, is you draw almost a half circle before you do your Spirit 1 attack. And whether you hit the enemy or you don't, it does max out your entire gauge. And it stays max, which gives you 13% more of power, which is nothing to laugh at. At level 1, it lasts for 30 seconds, level 2, 60 seconds, and at level 3, you get to enjoy max gauge for 90 seconds. Now remember, you get a 13% attack power boost when that thing is blinking max so that is nothing to laugh at that's a lot of power second up is the sakura slash now what this is is a very fancy move where you do a jump backwards and then you do a forward two strikes and then you have a little follow-up attack we're not sure how powerful these follow-up attacks are quite yet but you get one with level one two with level two and then three or so slashes with level three it does raise up your spirit gauge by one level just by connecting and it looks really cool. So this is a popular art as well. And finally we have the counter slash. This one is really tough to use but is super powerful. So all you do is you hit it and you go into a blocking animation for only I would say about one to one half seconds max. Now if you connect with an attack you'll do the counter. If you don't you'll completely waste the art. But if you do connect though you get 180 motion value counter attack without the need for any stamina at all. It's instantaneous, it's powerful as all heck, and consider red is 20% more attack and blinking is 13 more percent. Charge all that up and you can do stuff like that. It is fun. Changes. For Adept style they did increase the length of the animation for the final finisher which is something you want to keep in mind if you're a veteran of Adept Longsword. It's a small nerf but it does make a difference in G rank since monsters move faster. Believe it or not that's all they changed. Alchemy style. This is one of the few weapon style combinations that has potential due to the fact that all the arts for the longsword are really good. The controls in the style are laughably simple. X button loops your main combo and A button is a fade slash and a poke if you press it a second time. Beyond that I'm pressing R for the spirit combo, that's it. You can only fade slash to the left when you're outside of a combo, there's no spirit combo attack from a fade slash, and finally you can't even add in additional attacks during your spirit combo. But the SP level 3 ability to have your health gradually replenish coupled with that alchemy recovery item do go very well with that crazy risky new hunter art which I'll cover at the end of this video. Valor style. This is one of the more popular weapon style combinations in the game, similar to Valor Heavy Bowgun and for good reason. When not in Valor mode you're going to lose the ability to naturally do Fade Slashes and of course the follow up Spirit combo uh, from a Fade Slash as well. 
However, from Valor Sheath, you do have a few options. If you get hit, you'll automatically put away your weapon and only take 30% damage, or you can do one of three different cancel attacks, each of which will increase your Valor Gauge if you hit them. While you're holding Y, press X to do the upward cross strike, X and A will do a Fade Slash, and pressing R will start a Spirit Slash. Once you go into Valor Mode though, the fun begins. You'll regain Fade Slashes and your Spirit Gauge goes into a permanent new Blue Mode. Blue gives your attacks a boost of somewhere between 14 to 18%. It's not said officially which, uh, but I'm sure we can test and find out if we wanted to, but it's definitely between Yellow and Red Gauge. So not as strong as Red, but it never goes out while you're in Valor Mode. The Spirit Combo also changes. As long as you have Spirit Gauge, Valor Spirit 1 becomes a counter attack as well. At the start of the motion, if you get hit, you'll counter it and you'll be able to keep going into your combo. When you do a successful counter, you'll lose no damage, no stamina, it's fast, powerful, and you'll even regain Spirit Gauge. If you press R after it, you'll bypass Valor Spirit 2 and go straight to Spirit 3. You can also draw into the counter as well if you press R, X, and Y at the same time. For Valor Mode, it's all about that sheath evading and countering, and it's quite fun. The finisher is also very special to Valor Mode as well, and you don't put away your weapon, which is nice. Here's the motion value and how that looks. New Hunter Art. It is risky as all get out, but for a period of time, you'll start to gradually lose life, and you can regain that life by attacking the monster. A tough price to pay, but the benefit is well worth it. At level 1, it's 10%, 20% at level 2, and at level 3, you'll gain a whopping 30% additional attack power during this duration, which is 45 seconds, although your life will go down much faster. Really, it's like a cage match. It's, you're going to get massive power, but you're forced to attack relentlessly against the monster. Pair this up with something like that Hunter Art, which you know makes it so you never run out of Spirit Gauge, and you're going to be having a fun time. And that's pretty much it. There's really not much to say here except for the Adept Longsword is very fun, um, but the amount of time it takes to do that finisher does take a little bit longer than I would have hoped. Uh, so for in G rank, I do prefer to go into Valor mode in which you'll see probably a lot of Valor Longsword players because it is just a fantastic mode. The counter is so versatile, useful, and powerful that it kind of just you know overshadows all the other modes. That being said, all the Hunter Arts are amazing, so if you want the 2 in Guild, the 3 in Striker, or Alchemy, there's plenty of reasons to play each of the styles if you want. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hit that like button if you did, subscribe if you haven't already, and until next time, happy hunting.